Although both are part of SpaceX's Falcon rocket series, the Falcon 9 is launched more frequently than the Falcon Heavy. This has been clearly demonstrated through SpaceX's numerous launches to date. With its flexibility, the Falcon 9 has been launched almost continuously, carrying medium and small satellites, something we're no longer unfamiliar with. However, the Falcon Heavy, one of the largest rockets in operation worldwide, is tasked with far more significant missions. Its payloads often include large spacecraft and scientific experiments worth billions of dollars. Therefore, it can be said that while the Falcon Heavy is not launched as often as Falcon 9, it secures some of the most valuable contracts in the United States. Coming up in October of this year, the Falcon Heavy is set to launch NASA's expensive Europa Clipper spacecraft. On June 4th, NASA tweeted, Oh my, here's the big reveal of Europa Clipper. The spacecraft's out of the box and processing has started ahead of the journey to Jupiter's moon Europa. Launch targeted for October on a SpaceX Falcon Heavy from LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center. This spacecraft can be compared to the James Webb Space Telescope in terms of cost and development time. For Europa Clipper, work began over a decade ago in 2013, and the total cost is around $5 billion. When you factor in the nearly five-year journey to Jupiter, you end up with an extremely resource-intensive program. This mission marks a significant milestone in space explorations, focusing on studying the potential for life on Jupiter's moon Europa. The Europa Clipper spacecraft is designed to conduct a comprehensive survey of Europa's icy surface and subsurface ocean, employing a suite of sophisticated scientific instruments. The mission's primary objectives are to produce high-resolution images of Europa's surface, analyze its composition, and search for signs of recent or ongoing geological activity. Additionally, the spacecraft aims to measure the thickness of Europa's ice shell, identify subsurface lakes, and determine the depth and the salinity of the ocean. Over a three-and-a-half-year period, Europa Clipper will orbit Jupiter and execute 44 flybys of Europa at varying altitudes, ranging from 16 miles to 1,678 miles, or 25 kilometers to 2,700 km. By investigating the condition beneath Europa's icy crust, scientists hope to uncover clues that could suggest the presence of life, making Europa Clipper one of the most exciting and significant endeavors in modern planetary science. However, due to the mission's importance for the future of Earth and its multi-billion dollar value, choosing the launch vehicle for the mission was a very careful decision. Although we know now that the Falcon Heavy is the chosen vehicle, no one knew that to achieve this result, the Falcon Heavy had to be subjected to a long and drawn-out political process. Originally at the urging of Congress, NASA planned to launch the spacecraft on its Space Launch System rocket. There were two reasons for this. Legislators wanted to find additional emissions for the SLS rocket, and second, the powerful SLS rocket had the ability to get the Clipper to Jupiter within about four years. However, many in the scientific community preferred to launch on SpaceX's Falcon Heavy for a variety of reasons. For one, SpaceX offered launch services at a steep discount compared to the SLS rocket, which the White House estimated would cost more than $2 billion for the Clipper mission. Scientists were also concerned that the oft-delayed SLS rocket would simply not be ready for a 2024 launch date, and selecting it would delay the science mission. While politicians continued to insist that NASA should launch Clipper on the SLS rocket, three different events finally forced legislators to relent. First, in late 2018, NASA scientists concluded that the Falcon Heavy could complete the Clipper mission without needing a gravity assist from Venus, and therefore it would not have to go into the inner solar system. The Falcon Heavy could do so with the addition of a Star 48 kickstage. ULA's Delta IV Heavy rocket could have necessitated a Venus flyby, significantly increasing the thermal shielding needed on the Clipper spacecraft, so it was eventually ruled out. Nobody's going to say we're not going on the SLS, Barry Goldstein of NASA said at a meeting in November 2018. But if by chance we don't, we don't have the challenge of the inner solar system. This was a major development. This was a big deal for us. Second, after finalizing plans for the Artemis Moon program, NASA realized that the primary contractor for the SLS's rocket's core stage, Boeing, simply was not up to the task of building an additional rocket for the Clipper mission in time. In contrast, Falcon Heavy has a proven track record and has proven its reliability through many successful missions. 
Finally, what forced the rest of Congress to give in was a shaking issue with the SLS rocket. This large vehicle is powered off the pad by two very large solid rocket boosters that produce significant vibrations. SLS program officials had been telling the agency's leadership that the torsional load, essentially a measurement of twisting and vibration, was a certain value. However, after NASA performed wind tunnel testing, the actual torsional load value was nearly double the SLS program estimates. Accommodating for this launch stress, NASA officials said, would have required an additional $1 billion in modifications to make the spacecraft more robust. This additional cost ultimately led NASA to announce the shift of the Europa Clipper launch to SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. While the cost for a single SLS launch exceeds $2 billion, a Falcon Heavy launch is significantly more economical, saving NASA approximately $3 billion, costing only about $178 million. This cost efficiency is a crucial factor, especially given NASA's increasingly tight budget constraints and the need to allocate resources effectively across multiple projects. After all, the Europa Clipper is scheduled to launch this fall, specifically October 10th, aboard SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, the most powerful rocket in the company's fleet, generating 2.3 million kilograms 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. Ordinarily, the Falcon Heavy can serve some of its fuel on the way up, allowing its engines to continue burning so its three stages can descend gently to Earth where they can be recovered, refurbished, and reused. This will not be the case for this launch. NASA intends to squeeze every ounce of energy and every drop of fuel from the Falcon, giving Europa Clipper the greatest thrust possible and leaving the three spent stages to crash back into the ocean. We're going to burn the boosters and not recover them in order to get the maximum throw from the rocket, NASA project scientist Robert Palpadaro said. This will indeed give the spacecraft a lot of kick, sending it off at a blazing 40,200 kilometers an hour or 25,000 miles an hour relative to the in-motion Earth and up to 129,000 kilometers an hour, 80,000 miles per hour relative to the stationary sun. Even that, however, means that Europa Clipper will not arrive in the Jovian system until April 2030. It'll spend close to one more year orbiting Jupiter and using the gravity of the three other large moons to shape its trajectory, pointing it towards Europa. In 2031, it will at last begin its science campaign, carrying out nearby passes of Europa across the span of three years, with the possibility of a mission extension if the hardware and money permit. It depends on how the spacecraft is doing and NASA's funding situation, says Palperdino. We'd have to determine the goals for an extended mission, but I imagine we will find some areas that are especially interesting that we want to go after more intensively. The betting is that the ship will indeed be able to stay in service beyond its minimum of three years. NASA historically lowballs its mission timelines in order to keep the expectations in check and make it easy for the spacecraft to exceed them. Before the Spirit and Opportunity rovers landed on Mars in 2004, the space agency announced they would function for a minimum of 90 days, with any time beyond that considered a bonus. Ultimately, Spirit remained at work for six years, an opportunity for 15. Europa Clipper is built for similar longevity. The main body of the spacecraft is 5 meters tall, but when its power-generating solar panels are extended, it stretches 30 meters, about the length of a basketball court, to maximize the energy it collects from the distant sun. It's equipped with 24 engines, which will allow it to slalom through the obstacle course of Jupiter's many moons, taking precise aim at Europa. The spacecraft is also equipped with nine different science instruments, including wide and narrow fuel cameras, a temperature measuring system, a mass spectrometer to study the chemistry of both the surface of Europa and its exceedingly tenuous atmosphere, a gravity sensor that will determine how much the moon is flexed and squeezed as it moves through its orbit, a magnometer to measure the thickness of the ice shell, and another one that can help determine the depth and salinity of Europa's ocean. No matter what Europa Clipper does or doesn't discover, Culberson's 2015 law means that unless Congress repeals the Europa provision, a landing mission will come next, but that doesn't mean it'll come soon. The space agency conducts what it calls a decadal survey to select missions for the upcoming 10 years, and the next review is not due until 2030, or right about the time Europa Clipper is finally arriving at Jupiter. Planning, designing, and building a lander could easily take another decade. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.